Hello again everyone, it's Vince Four from TradingWinds.com and this is our Fibonacci crash course. Please do remember that when it comes to trading, it can be extremely risky if you do not know what you're doing. So please do not trade with real money until you are absolutely comfortable with the system or strategy that you are using. <clears throat> now in today's presentation, I'm going to talk a bit about what the Fibonacci numbers are, at least how they relate to, to trading and what they're used for, how we use them uh, in trading. And I'm going to do so by going through many examples with you here. Um, what am I going to teach you today? Well, I'm going to show you how you can pinpoint your entries with Fibonacci's. I'm going to talk about how you can uh, set your profit targets, how using these tools uh, will help us determine significant levels of support and resistance, which are extremely important no matter what uh, strategy or system you're using. I'm going to show you an easy way to combine the relative strength index indicator or the RSI with your Fibonacci so that you know uh, when a, a, a particular run is about to come to an end. And I'm also going to reveal with you <clears throat> certain Fibonacci levels that uh, pretty much only the pros use. I've only ever seen one other uh, trader reveal this and I'm probably going to have <laughs> Um, many other pros uh, be very upset at me for revealing th these. There's, there's a number of things that uh, pros like to, to keep quiet, but I'm going to share these with you today and I'm going to show you how, how to use these, okay? So when it comes to Fibonacci numbers, in, in math that is, the Fibonacci numbers or the, or the sequence are the numbers in the following uh, integer sequence here. So it's an easy way to think of these or, or uh, understand these are if you take two of the numbers and you add them together, it leads to the next one. So in other words, zero plus one is one, and one plus one is two, and then one plus two is three, and two plus three is five, etc. So that is the sequence. Why does it work so effectively and so on? I, I'm not gonna spend hours and hours here going through the history of Fibonacci numbers. I'm just gonna show you the fact that uh, uh, they do work when it comes to trading, and I'm gonna do so with, with many examples. The sequence was named after the Italian mathematician named Fibonacci. But when it comes to trading, these numbers give us a way to forecast levels of support and resistance. Again, significant levels of support and resistance. And with that, we can uh, determine potential price targets. We can also use them to time our entries and set our stops. But more importantly, they're very, very valuable when it comes to uh, to risk assessment and, and what they can tell us about how much risk we are about to take when entering an order. Okay, the Fibonacci tools specifically that I'm going to focus on are the Fibonacci retracements, the extensions, and then there's a, a number of other tools that aren't used as often that I will teach you. One of them is the ARCs. Uh, another one which is actually becoming more and more of a favorite of mine, which is the Fibonacci fans. And then there's the spirals and the time series. Okay, I'm going to go through each one of these. And along the way, I will add in little tidbits that uh, I think are going to be very useful for you in your trading. So let's move to my charting platform here. Oops. And here it is. And let's start talking a bit about Fibonacci's and how we can use them in our trading. So when it comes to trading, you know, most of us have a, a trading plan or a strategy that we use. But regardless, all that is, is to try to identify an entry point. But what we're trying to do when we do identify that entry point is sort of build a case for that trade. And, and, and we're trying to line things up so that we can put the odds in our favor and convince ourselves that that is uh, a strong enough setup for us uh, to merit us risking our money on, okay? So where the Fibonacci numbers come in are these tools that I'm going to teach you. Where they come in, they, they confirm that entry. That's what they're really used for uh, as a, a, a confirmation tool, okay? So in, in other words, let's look at it this way. And, and uh, let's, let's pick any stock really. I don't know. Let's go to Nike. Maybe we'll come back to this chart a little later. But let's look at, at Nike, for example. And if, for example, you know, we were down here. For, let, let's not look at, at, uh, 
at the first at the last three quarters of this chart let's look back here now i'm going to zoom into this here i, I want you to focus on this setup here okay so let's assume that we were watching uh, Nike and then we, we see Nike just take this beautiful run higher and now it starts pulling back and so we're, we're, we're going to start to look for an area where we can get in and get long again on, on Nike. So you know many of us might, might be using different trading systems to identify an actual entry point there to help determine exactly when to get in but when it comes to areas of support and resistance having those identified for us is extremely important when it comes to trading because when a stock is moving either either moving forward okay when it's moving forward you want to know where your levels of resistance are because you want to know what if and when it's going to run into a bit of that resistance and may start to to pull back again and in a similar way when it starts pulling back you want to know where there's support level uh, where it might bounce off of and continue going higher and that's that's what these tools really do each one of these tools whether it's the retracements the extensions the arcs the fan spirals etc they identify specific levels of support and resistance or project those levels into the future and it, you'll be amazed at, at just how well they work again exactly why i don't really know and I don't really care for that matter. I, I've been doing this for almost 30 years, actually over 30 years now. And I can tell you that over those 30 years, I have not only used these tools, but I've seen them work over and over and over again. It's just uncanny how well they work. So let me show you a few examples. So using the retracement tool, let's, let's start off with the retracement tool here. And you'll see that with most charting platforms, um, you'll see different types of Fibonacci tools but these are the most common here so we're going to start with the Fibonacci retracement tool and with most of these tools what you're trying to do is identify a low and a high point okay so in most cases when you identify a potential setup to get into you're going to be looking at the most recent high and low okay just before that to help you draw out these uh, these levels of support and resistance so Assuming we were looking at getting into a trade somewhere in this area here in mid-March on Nike. Okay, we had no idea what was about to happen, but we were just here and we thought Nike's gone on a nice run. It's pulling back. Where is some support that might tell us that this thing is going to bounce and go higher? Well, if we take our retracement tool and click on the low, the most recent low down here, and then drag that up to the most recent high. Okay, there are three key levels for the retracement tool that you need to be aware of. And they are here, 38.2%, 50%, and 61.8%. Now, as I'll show you as we go through this, uh, depending on your charting platform, you will have many, many levels, uh, Fibonacci levels to choose from here. I suggest you go in and you, you only check off the ones that we will be discussing today here that you'll need and then save that as your default so you don't have to keep redrawing those every single time, okay? But the ones I use and the ones that are the most common out there are for the for the retracements that is, are the 38.2%, the 50%, and the 61.8%. And I want you to look at this and, and consider this as a zone, okay? Not specific individual levels, but more of a zone. In other words, if we can color this in here like this, that's the zone of resistance or support in this case that you want to be looking at. So when a stock goes on a run and pulls back, what you want to do is, is start looking for a reversal signal. In this case, there was one right in here in the form of a, a bullish engulfing pattern okay, right here. But what you want to see is that if it does pull back into the zone, anywhere between the 38.2 and the 61.8, if it pulls back into that zone and bounces, there is a very high likelihood that that will continue higher, okay? Basically what this is telling you is that there is a signif significant, excuse me, level of support in here that will hold up that stock and cause it to bounce and then continue its trend higher, okay? So again, 
Let me redraw these. Let me take them off the chart here and redraw it. Let me zoom back into this section. You're going, you're, once you identify where you are with this stock and uh, you're looking for a potential setup, you want to identify the most recent low. Oops, sorry. Let me go back and grab that tool. That is the Fibonacci retracement tool. You want to go from the low to the high. Okay? And that should draw your lines, 38.250 and 61.8. If you get a pullback and a bounce from there or some type of reversal signal from there, there is a very strong likelihood that your stock will continue moving higher. And again, this works on anything, whether it's futures contracts, forex pairs, uh, stocks, uh, you name it. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you can chart, you can use the Fibonacci's for. Okay, let's look at... Uh, a short example okay works exactly the same way I'm just gonna type in any symbol off the top of my head here and let's see if we can find uh, an area uh, a pullback here so let, let's look at this area here let's go from in here to here okay so if if we were in here and we, we saw this setup here we're thinking well wow, this is a nice bearish engulfing setup we think this stock will continue lower so it, it had moved lower it started to retrace and now we've got a reversal signal here. So we take our retracement tool once again, and again, we identify the most recent high and low. In this case, it's back here. So remember, when you're, when you're drawing it, uh, when you're looking at a setup to the long side, you're drawing your tool from the low to the high. In this case, we're looking at a short setup, so we're gonna first click on the high here, and then drag it down and click on the low. And there are our three key levels for retracements the 38.2 the 50 percent and the 61.8 percent and again you want to look at this more as a zone than individual specific levels okay in other words if the stock pulls back and ends up in between the 38.2 and the 50 or in between the 50 and the 61.8 it doesn't matter that's perfectly fine. It's a zone of strong support there or resistance in this case. And you can see how well it hits that 38.2 and bounces off, okay? And then it just continues from there. So, and you can see that if you leave these on your chart, okay? As you see here, the, this, this trade worked out beautifully. It moved down nicely, but then once it started moving higher again, look at the levels that are acting as uh, resistance once again those exact same levels okay so these Fibonacci tools they not only show you the existing levels of support and resistance but it, it's projecting it forward so you can see those in the future and use those and you'll see those more specifically when I show you the Fibonacci fans okay but that is the retracement tool and I am going to clear this off and move on to the extension tool for a minute, but we will come back here when I reveal those, those key levels uh, that the pros use, okay? So let's go back here and now let's go back to uh, ELLI here. And this time we're going to talk a bit about the Fibonacci extension tool. And as you saw, the retracement tool is used more to help confirm those entries as where the extension tool is now going to be used to help us set our targets moving forward. So once we do get into that trade, where are we likely to take our profits? Okay, so let's zoom into this area back here for a moment. I want you to look at this shaded area back here. That's where we are going to uh, identify our levels of um, our most recent high and low. Okay, so let's assume that it's this area here that we want to take a trade in okay we see a setup we've seen this pullback uh so first of all we would want to put in our retracement tool and see how far this pullback went did it go far enough uh, at a proper fib level etc but if it did then at the same time what we can do is take our extension tool fibonacci extensions and this time we will click on the most recent low click on the most recent high and in this case, for this tool, we have to go back to the low. So you're clicking low to high, back to low. And the key levels for the extensions that I want you to make note of are the 127.2% level, the 161.8% level, 
and then the 261.8% level. And there's actually another level further up here, which is the 423.6, but that's rarely, rarely uh, used, okay? So these are the three key ones, the 1272, 1618, and 2618. Those are the keys. Again, you can go into your settings and adjust them and set them, set them as a default. So these are going to be your targets. And you can see just how well they work, not only as targets, but as those levels of support and resistance, okay? These, remember, these were drawn off this low and high. So at this point, none of this had happened yet, okay? Once this low and high was revealed after this pullback, you draw them there, these would be the lines. And look at what happened with the stock, okay? First of all, it, it pulls up <clears throat> here, actually goes through that first level, comes back, retests it, and moves on. Where does it go? The next level. So it hits that target, okay? Bounces off it, attempts again, and it's acting as resistance. It pulls back again. This time it blew through it, okay? Gapped higher on earnings. It started to come down. Which level now acts as support? The exact same level, that 127. From there it bounces and it hits the 1618. There's the next target. But again, it acts as resistance. You can see the stock just kind of moves sideways there for a while. Then it finally moves off and takes off. And where does it go? The very next Fibonacci level, the 2618. What happens? It hits it, runs into resistance, moves back, try, attempts it again, fails against, attempts it again, and fails. Where does it go? Pretty much right back to that 1618. Tries to recover. Where does it come back to? 1618. Holds support again now. Takes off again. Comes back. Holds support again. So you, again, you can see how significant these levels are. How good these tools are at identifying those hidden levels of support and resistance. So once you draw these on your chart, you can just leave them on. Because not only will they identify, help you identify targets, they help remind you where... The levels of support and resistance are and typically when when you when it blows through one level it ends up going to the next and coming back and retesting that level again and etc so it, it they're basically like channels uh, the stock will, will bounce from one to the next to the next etc so very very helpful okay let's let me draw one for you on a short stock and then we'll look at, at some of the other tools here let's let's pick something like uh, I don't know let's go to Yahoo maybe I think Yahoo yeah Yahoo's had a nice drop so let's look at this one here so if if we were looking at Yahoo yeah was kind of going sideways then it started trending lower okay we don't want to chase we want to wait for a pullback there's the pullback and now we want to uh, you know we can draw our retracement tool to see if that's a proper level but now we want to we spot here at least for you know the strategies we use one of them is with engulfing patterns and we spot a nice bearish engulfing setup right here so we want to see at this point we've decided to get into this trade short so but we don't know what's going to happen next and we don't know where to set our targets okay so that's where that fibonacci extension tool comes in what do we do from here we look to the left and we identify the most recent high and low. So here's that low and we'll call this the most recent high here. So when you take your extension tool, you go from high to low and back to high. And there are your key levels, the 1272, the 1618. And if I squeeze this down, there's the 2618 level. Okay. And you can see that these have the actual price levels on the right hand side okay they're not just the percentages shown so if you're using them to, to actually set a sell order you can use uh, these prices or, or the whole number uh, that's the closest to that price but again not only do they give us targets they identify areas of support and resistance so the trade goes our way there's that first target it hits it goes through where does it end up going? The next line. There's our second target. It bounces. It goes back to the first. Now that acts as resistance. Bounces lower. Continues. Blows through it. Goes to the next one. 
bounces, almost comes back there, goes back, retests it, and retests it, breaks through, retests it to the upside, comes lower here, huddles around for a couple days, shoots up, retests, and etc. You can see just how well they work. It's uncanny, really. And uh, but typically, when you get your one two seven two target hit. If it blows through that, a very, very high likelihood it is going to reach the 1618, okay? So those are the two tools that are used the most often, okay? And that's exactly how they're used. Now, I'll give you one other little trick before I move on to the other tools. And that is, I hear many times the question that the trade's going my way. And yes, I can take, say, a third of my profit here and another third here, etc. I can start scaling out. But, you know, how can I really know if if the stock is, is uh, you know, going to actually get to all these targets? So if it gets to the 1272, should I take all my profit here? Or what are what's the likelihood of it going to the next level, etc.? Well, one one indicator you can use to help you with that is what we call the relative strength index indicator or the RSI. Okay. It's widely used and it's on all charting platforms right here on Thinkorswim RSI. So we're gonna add that on and I'm gonna go into the settings and show you that for the purposes of, of using it with the Fibonacci tools, I use the default setting. So it'll be 14. That's the default that I've seen on all charting platforms is the 14. And this is an indicator that's used to identify overbought or oversold conditions. Now we do use this in some of our other strategies in a slightly different way. But for this purpose, we use it the traditional way, uh, trying to identify overbought and oversold conditions. And so I'm going to put this on the chart. And you'll see here that there's lines drawn at the 70 level and the 30 level. Some charting platforms have it at 80 and 20. Most are 70 and 30. Okay. So one way to use this in conjunction with the extension tool is, um, well, first of all, let me explain. When this red line here is below that 30 level, okay, that's considered oversold meaning it's extended, the stock is extended to the downside and we're very likely to get a bounce uh, from there. And if it's above the 70 level, then it's considered to be overbought, okay, or extended to the upside and we're very likely to get a some kind of pullback, okay? So when you're in a trade and you see your stock moving towards these targets, okay, when it hits those targets, and you approach an oversold condition at the same time here, okay, then that tells you that run is pretty much over. Now you can see in this case, it continued on. So it's not perfect. It's not going to be 100%. But if you had gotten in up here, okay, in the 39 area, you had shorted this and it had come down all the way to the 34 area. You made a $5 profit basically on, you know, uh, a stock that's under $40, a very good return, and you're in an oversold condition, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking that position off. A lot of times you will see that it, it'll hit the 127 and it'll be close to, but it won't actually be oversold. And then once it gets to the 1618 level, then it'll go oversold, etc. So this is a tool that you can use in conjunction with the extensions to tell you, you know, uh, how far has that run gone and what's the likelihood of it pulling back, okay? And, and even though this example isn't ideal, we can look at, at others. Let's go back to, what was it, Nike that we were looking at earlier for a trade setup? Let's see, okay, so so this trade setup. So let, let's see how it, how it would have worked out here. Let me clear off the, uh, the retracement tool drawings. Okay, and let's grab our extension tool and use the exact same high and low as before. So here to here, back to here, okay? So here, you can see that when we when we initially moved higher here and got to that 1272 level right up here, okay, on this trade, that it actually hit that 70 mark. 
would have been a great time to get out. And in this case, it would have been, or we would have spent, you know, the next month or so just going sideways, doing nothing. Okay, so in this case, it would have helped you out. Okay, but again, I've seen most of the examples I see in my trading is is that uh, it'll get close to that one two seven two um, to be in that overbought condition there. But if it's not there yet, uh, it, really high probability it's getting to that one six one eight. So you hold on, and then if you're at that overbought condition on the one six one eight, then you want to hold or you want to sell. And you see again here after that consolidation, it did move up to that one six one eight, hit the overbought, and then pulled back again. Okay. So anyway, those that's another tool you can use in conjunction with that to help you uh, not only identify those targets, but know when when to get out and, and, and when to, to hold on uh, a bit longer, okay? Uh, let's talk a bit about the arcs. So let's clean our layout here. And let's go to our G arcs. Here we go. So now with every other tool I'm going to show you, it's the same thing where you're still identifying a low and a high, okay? Now, the arcs draw a circle around a certain radius, okay, using those Fibonacci numbers. And really, what they're supposed to tell you is that, uh, again, when it hits one of those levels, okay, uh, it can stall for a while, or you're going to get a change in direction at those levels. And, and you can see here, it was moving higher, it hit, and it pulled back. It moved higher here. It kind of went sideways, but when it hit it, it pulled back again. So the arcs aren't one of my favorite tools. The next one I'm going to show you, which is the fans, it is one I like much better. But this is how you use the arcs, okay? And uh, it really doesn't matter from where, where you're drawing them, but it's, it's the most recent high and low that you're really looking for when you're looking to add a trade setup. When you're, when you're talking about a longer time frame, what you really want to do is identify the lowest low and the highest high on that chart okay and draw those levels on there okay longer term and remember that when you're looking at support and resistance levels regardless of whether you're using the the uh, retracement tool extension tool or any other tool when you're talking about support and resistance it's a great idea to draw those lines on a higher time frame like the monthly or the weekly, and then revert back to the daily, okay, after you've identified those levels. Because the higher the time frame, the stronger those levels of resistance, okay? But these are the arcs. They're not very widely used, but it's something you can quickly draw on your chart. Let me draw one from, say, this, this low here to this high. And again, you can see that once it hits that line, Okay, it stalls and pulls back a little. It moves higher, hits that next one, and retraces, right? So it's just something to, to keep in mind, and it could be something that you use uh, once you're in that trade, just, just as a heads up to see if there's any, any resistance coming your way, okay? Now let's look at the Fibonacci fan tool, uh, which is one I, I really like. The fans and, and what the fans do is again draw the areas of support and resistance okay but at the same time many traders use them as a tool to draw channels as well because as you know a stock will move from one support level to a resistance level and back etc so let's let's look at the same levels here using this tool this is the Fibonacci fans we're going to use the same low to the same high and now you can see it draws those three lines. And what these are, are the same levels that we had on our retracement tool, meaning the 38.2, the, the 50, and the 61.8 levels of resistance, okay? And you can see that once that stock starts trading along these lines, it's pretty much bouncing from one level to another, okay? When it hits it, it bounces, it hits it, it bounces, it hits it, bounces, hits it, bounces, okay? So these are acting as significant levels of support 
and resistance. Okay? So this basically draws trend lines in for you, creates that channel, and helps you be aware of what uh, resistance is above you, what support is below you, and then take uh, patterns off of this. So remember, at this point, we were here in the chart. We had no idea what was about to happen, but the lines would have been drawn at those exact levels because we're using this low and this high. So we draw them in and we leave them on our chart and we just watch this stock bouncing from one side to the other. And you know, if you're getting reversal signals at these areas, you know, or down here, you can, you can take those trades, but you know, they're also drawing those trend lines. So if you're holding on to this and it's, it's moving and then suddenly it breaks that trend line, well, you know that that trend is over, especially when it comes back to retest that level and fails. Now you're looking at a fresh downtrend, right? And now you can, once that happens, you can go back in and draw your, your uh, fans in the opposite direction using the most recent high to the low kind of thing, and, and, and you go from there. Uh, so there's many ways to use these, but remember, the key here, always remember, the purpose, the purpose of these indicators is to draw those lines of significant support and resistance, okay? The key being, if you're in here and your trade, the trade has gone your way, so you're in a nice profit and it pulls back, and you have, you know you have that support there, so it helps you determine, am I getting out of here right away, or am I holding on, okay? It, it, there's many ways support and resistance helps. This is, this is one of them. Now, before I move on and show you the, the spirals and the time series, which are less important, they're just like the arcs, don't use them very often. And, and, well, actually, let me show you them now, and then I'll, I'll, I'll reveal those, those levels that the pros use, and I'll show you how we use them on the retracements and the fans, uh, et cetera. So let's look at the spirals, okay, the Fibonacci spirals. I'm going to take those same low and high. And again, these are arcs drawn on the chart. Okay, And these are meant, once again, to identify those, those, uh, those turning points in the stock. Okay, For, First of all, that, that resistance up ahead where the stock might stall, but then a change in direction. And you can see on this level how it hit it, it followed it along, and then it it moved higher. Okay, So again, not as widely used at all, but um, can be very effective. Now with the arcs and the spirals, what I suggest is that you, you keep those for, for the, the smaller moves. So in other words, we drew this from here to here, okay? When you see that first pullback, that's what you want to do is draw it from here to here, that low and the high, okay? And identify those those areas, okay? Then if you, oh, once that pullback is moving, you've identified a new high and low and another pullback, uh, you would draw another set and so on. And when you get the lines overlapping, okay? They tend to be more significant, and, and I'm going to show you that as well with the retracement tool uh, where we talk about clusters. I mean, there are many traders out there that try to overlap uh, the Fibonacci lines, and when you get an area where several of those levels overlap, it means it's an even stronger level of support and resistance, okay? So those are the, the spirals, and the time series the difference between the time series and the other ones is this is going to put vertical lines on our chart. It's going to identify areas in time um, where we can expect a price change. So I'm going to use that same low and that same high here. And you can see that it's given us these vertical lines. Okay. I, again, just meant to give us a heads up on where the stock may, may stall or change direction okay uh, an area of significant change again not used very widely i certainly do not use these very wide uh, very often at all i'm just i'm showing you several different tools everyone has their own way of trading 
and this may match your style. So I wanted to, to show you these. Again, you can, you can hover over different highs and lows and see if there's lines overlapping. Of course, the near-term ones, it's going to be a little messy on your chart. But what you're trying to do is see if there's areas of overlap uh, on the ones further down, giving you a heads up that once your trade starts going in your direction, what do you need to look out for? Is there any resistance up ahead? Is there any areas where this may turn around on you uh, or you may want to get out of your position? And again, you can you can throw the RSI on here and see if there's any time when this goes to an overbought condition that lines up with one of these timelines. Uh, also very useful okay now let's let's move on to to the stuff that I'm sure all of you have been waiting for and, and that's the little tricks that that the pros use so first of all let me talk about clusters so in other words let's let's take the same example here but go back and use the retracement tool and so this is the high and low that we uh, were identifying for the retracement tool. And this was the zone, the 38.2 to 61.8 zone for a pullback. Now, in between here, there's other areas of highs and lows that we can use. So what if we continue drawing these, okay? And you can go, if this was a chart today, we can certainly take it from the very high and then move back and take them on all the other lows. Since we're talking about this period alone, okay, we can we can go back and draw them at different levels. So you can use that same low to a different high, okay. You can use that high point and another low point, okay. So this low to that high, this low to that high, etc. Now I'll try to zoom in here to see a lot of lines here. Hard to to. Uh, Maybe not the best example here. Uh, I'll try to, I'll, I'll draw another one for you, see if we can make it clear. But really what you're looking for here are lines that overlap and you're looking for clusters. So if you can see at a quick glance right in here, this area here, and there's some darker lines, right? There, there's two or three that are, are overlapping. And, and you can see how when the stock moved there, how it kind of huddled around in that area a little longer, okay, a more significant area of support and resistance. That's all you're trying to really identify here. So when you get a significant pullback such as this, you want to see if you can get multiple, multiple lines uh, to line up in the same area. If you get a bunch of fibs that are kind of all one sort of overlapping the other, it means this is a very, very strong area of support and resistance and you're more likely to get a bounce off of that, okay? So you can you can draw them from each one of the highs and lows and see if there's clear areas that uh, are overlapping there with the clusters. Now, here are the keys, and here are the levels that that the pros use more often. So let's let's look at, uh, I don't know, let's take another style. Let's look at, at Garmin maybe nice downtrend here actually that let's see okay so if we were going to let's say we were going to look for actually this isn't a very good example either let's see STX maybe looking for the one we saw earlier that we were going to use here okay well let, let's look at this one here here's that this down move here and a pullback so Let's say we, we're going to use our retracement tool to see where this lines up. Okay. And it ended up lining up nicely in that 38.2 to 61.8 zone. Okay. So nice. Now that's a, a normal one. Now let's look at this one here. This move here with this pullback. Okay. So let me zoom in to this area. Okay. So it's this down move, this pullback. Now let's take our Fibonacci retracement tool. We're going to go from high to low. now. What do you see? It's gone beyond that 61.8 zone, right? It's gone beyond that. So most traders would say, "Well, that's not a great setup." Well, here's a little secret. 
what the pros have realized is this. You know, many times, many times these levels, because there's significant areas of support resistance, they are used to set uh, stops as well. So let's say it pulled back into this 38.2 to 61.8 range and you were expecting a pullback. So you decided to jump the gun and get into this trade around here and put your stop just above that 61.8 in case it retraced on you, right? Well, you know how how uh, sometimes it feels like every time you get into a trade, you set your stop, the market guns for it, takes your stop out, and then, of course, the trade goes in your direction. Well, what the pros have looked at is where do most people put their stops and where would they get taken out and then the stock reverse. So I'm going to edit this. For you. I'm going to go into edit properties and then I'm going to add three different levels and I want you to make note of these levels. You can add a curve here. You can add as many as you want. Now here they are. 0 0.66. That's one of them. The next one is 0 0.786 and then another last one is 0 0.88. Okay. Not sure how well you can see these on the video but they're 0 0.66 0 0.786 and 0 0.88 okay i'm going to add those and i'm going to save this as a default so i won't have to add them again close now here you can see that this pullback even went beyond this 66 percent level the 66 percent level almost got to that 78.6 but many times you will see that once it breaches that 61.8 it'll hit the 66 level or that 78.6 and turn around so these are three levels here that many pros use and they're perfectly happy taking a trade if they get a reversal signal here anywhere in that zone uh, because they figure many people have their stops put here the weekends get shaken out and they get in here before that drop okay so those are key levels. Again, to the long side, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know, let's look at another stock. Uh, let's look at, well, that's not a good one because of this long wick here. Let's see, NKE. Let's look at this one here. If we draw our retracement, actually, let me get my retracement tool from low to high. Let's see where this one came in here. Look at that, low to high. It retraced, right? Here's that 61 level that it bounces off of, which was good. Comes back, flushes through, would have taken out most stops in this area, just below that, if you put your stop there, right? Comes down to that 66 line and bounces and goes on a run. You see? So that these are key areas that, that the pros use, 66, 78.6, and 0.88 or 88 percent okay but the one most common is that 66 mark okay <clears throat> so hopefully that that will help you let's see what else we've got here for you I want to make sure I'm not missing anything for you one of the keys remember is to leave your lines drawn on your chart uh, because you see if you had drawn that retracement here and gotten into the, this trade here okay you by leaving these on you can identify the the areas of support and resistance where it might run into a bit of uh, uh, of, of, of trouble and you can see how once it, it clears one it comes back retest that same level bounces clears it comes back retest that level okay these are permanent levels of support and resistance that can be left on your chart okay and remember, you're using these tools just to build a case for that trade. So they can be used with many different indicators. Uh, for example, you know, we use in one of our, our setups, the Ichimoku cloud, for example. Okay, so let's go to a chart here. And so you see how this pullback here ends up being right near the top end of that cloud. So that we identify as an area of support and resistance. Well, why don't we take our Fibonacci retracement tool, go from the most recent low 
to high here, and I'll zoom in so you can see it. Okay, there it is from low to high, and see if that pullback ends up coming back somewhere within that 38.2 to 618 zone, which is drawn here. Okay, did it? Yes, it did. And it's also bouncing off the top end of that cloud. So now, now I've got even more reasons. And, and look at this. Now I've got the relative strength index, which we use in this strategy, crossing back above the zero line here at the same time. So with every other indicator I'm looking at, I'm confirming that yes, I'm on the right track and that this stock looks like it's about to bounce from here. Okay, so that's what you're really doing with these tools is building a case for your entries and then having those permanent levels of support and resistance on your chart. So you know that when it hits a level where it's most likely to either stall or bounce through. And if it bounces through it or goes through it, you have another level up ahead that you know uh, it's going to shoot for. Okay. So hopefully all that's very helpful. One other la last little trick is I know uh, we've had a few members that say that they're using charting platform that doesn't have the extension tool. It only has the retracement tool. So on your retracement tool, what you can do is use it backwards and it will draw your, your extensions for you. Okay. So in other words, if we wanted to, if we we're going to use this, this high and low here, okay, high and low, and then wanted to project for, for our targets using the extension tool. So let, let me show you first the extension tool. I, actually, I'm going to show you in a cleaner chart because this is, let me clean this up. I want you to just look at those. Let's go back to our earlier chart. Let's take the extension. Okay. So remember, we're taking this low and this high back to low. And when that's we I wanted to identify the 1272 extension and the 1618, right? Okay. If you take now your, your uh, retracement tool, if you didn't have the luxury of having that extension tool on your charting platform, but you do have the retracement tool, you take it except instead of drawing from the low to high, you go from the high to the low, right? And there are those same, exact same levels. So there's the 127, the 1618, the 2618, okay? All you have to do is make sure that when you go into your settings, they're all checked off there, okay? And if you don't have them, you can add them on. And remember, you can add on those those pro levels, the 66, the 786, and the 88, okay? And that's and so you can accomplish the exact same thing with the one tool, the retracement tool, okay? So very, very helpful tools, no matter what strategy you're using, no matter what trading system you're using, it is always key to know where your significant levels of support and resistance are. And remember that Fibonacci fan tool will also draw in those trend lines, okay? These are the 38.2, 50, and 618 and you can add the pro levels in here too let me show you you can just add a curve 0 0.66 add a curve 0 0.786 add a last one 0 0.88 and add those on okay and see again they're acting as support and resistance uncanny it works very very well Hope you, uh, you, you get a lot of use out of it. Hope you enjoyed it. And now, if you have any questions here at all, let me just, I want to just put up our contact info for you. There it is. You can certainly go to our website at tradingwinds.com. But if you have any questions at all on this or anything else we do, just go to, uh, send us an email at info at tradingwinds.com. Give us a call at one 888 574-2426. And if you enjoyed this course, we have uh, all the others that we offer are on our store at tradingwinds.com slash store. Now we do uh, offer discounts to our members. So uh, if you're not a member and you want more information on that, give us a call, or send us an email, uh, go to our website. All the information is there. Okay. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much, everyone, and we'll see you on our next class.